Hi YouTube and Facebook friends, this is Judy. Um, about a week or so ago, the Lord um, gave me some scriptures. He gave me Psalm 50 and Psalm 80, and he gave me the word servitude. And I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, so I waited. I did a little research. So um, I'm going to read some of Psalm 50. That's where I think I should go with it. And um, I want to just take a, a couple of a minute or two and to just um, to get into, um, you know, the presence of God, because I want to make sure that I say the right thing and um, and get his message out. So. Let's just have a little bit of peace. Dear Holy Father, I ask you to use me to say what you want me to say. Uh, based around this scripture, I, I know that it's very important to you because when you gave it to me, I could feel how upset you were with your people. And um, I'm so uh, insufficient around you and dependent on you to um, explain every little detail to me so that I could relate it. So, um, Thank you, Father. I'm going to begin to uh, to speak this psalm that you uh, put on my heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I hope I do right. Amen. Okay, this Psalm 50 is about uh, judgment begins at the house of God. Now, uh, this whole psalm, if you can imagine is a courtroom. It's the Lord's courtroom. Just picture in your head a courtroom and the judge is the Lord sitting on the throne. And uh, I just want to quote something from Matthew 26, 20, 64 before I go forward. And it's one line. It says, Jesus said, you will see the Son of Man come in the clouds of heaven. Okay. Uh, now, unlike the other psalms where the people are speaking and pleading and praising and petitioning the Lord uh, with prayer, this psalm is God speaking to his people. So it's a very important psalm. And uh, so I, I, I use the King James Bible. So this is where I get my information from, just to let you know. It's a psalm of Asaph. Um, the mighty God, even the Lord, hath spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous around about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. Selah. Oh, hear, O oh my people, and I will speak, O oh Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor 
goats out of thy folds. For every beast in the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked God saith, What house hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and casteth my words behind thee. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation all right will I shew the salvation of God. Now, <laughs> the Lord is really angry. And this is not only to the people of Israel. It's to all his children who are in a delusion about him, who don't keep his word, who do what they want, who serve themselves. The world is filled with people that want to just keep feeding their flesh and serving their own selfish desires. They don't acknowledge God. They don't do anything for him. They don't give anything up. They just want more and more and more. They're like a big assembly line. You know, just keep feeding me and feeding me and feeding me things of the world. And they're not even considering that God exists. Um, I wrote a little bit about man and how he doesn't want to give up his sin. Uh, he doesn't love the truth, God's laws or the truth. Man has basically reinterpreted who God is. His character, his nature, and man has basically molded himself. In, uh, um, they have molded God, basically, into this being that he's just a bright ball of love and light. And so that means that they can just do whatever they want. And God is just a big, huge, bright, loving ball of forgiveness. And when they perish or when the end comes, God will just have open arms and welcome them in and just forget everything. Now, if that were true, then why is this psalm the only psalm that God is speaking to the people from his courtroom. If you believe that God made us in his image, and I believe that we are made in God's image, you know it yourself that you have boundaries. You do have laws within yourself. If somebody breaks a rule of yours, they're going to have hell to pay because you're going to open your mouth and you're going to go after them and retaliate for what they did to you. 
So then why doesn't, how is it that God doesn't have any laws or rules and will never hold you down or pin you down and make you pay for breaking his commandments? If you make people pay for saying things against you and breaking your rules. This is a big delusion. This is what's going to cost people their salvation because they have been sinning for so long and they don't read the word and they have just interpreted who God is to suit their lifestyle and the sin that they're in. Um, I wrote this and I, I said that God has God has no laws to these people and no boundary and in man's world sin doesn't exist so everything is permissible and if it isn't when we get to the end of the road God will forgive because that's what he is he's just a big ball of love and light for everybody to just soak it up sop up those loving rays of happiness and joy bask in it bathe in it the gospel is just an ancient story to create fear fear towards our creator and fear of his judgment hell people who know the bible and take some scripture that just sits right with them will embrace it while at the same time if the bible says something against a sinful behavior that that person is enjoying they cast out that particular scripture and weave the bible into their own patch quilt to reflect and justify themselves and their unholy lifestyle so they just cherry pick the scriptures and they just you, they just cling to the ones that they want that preach to them the type of god that they want god to be so that they're not in um in uh, standing in any judgment okay they're denying judgment they're denying that god is against what they're doing so they have to recreate their own little bible okay to justify their life um the apostasy of the church the lukewarm christians the denominations are all falling into sin they are leading the congregation away from the truth and the way and the life jesus christ permitting and coexisting with other religions, false gods, idolaters, validating sinful behavior, and claiming that you don't have to believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be saved and go to heaven. Um, let's examine the delusions uh, that we are not made in the image of our Creator. In Genesis 1.27, it says, God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So then let me ask you, do you have rules? Do you have boundaries that people cannot cross? Do you get angry when somebody betrays you or slanders you or accuses you unjustly? I think that you do. I think that most people anger and snap very easily and retaliate and punish anyone who violates them then why do you think that God is just a big ball of white light and love? God gave us his Ten Commandments to Moses and the Bible, uh, which is our roadmap and guide to getting through this world. Both are cast out in lieu of sin. Jesus taught the apostles and instructed them to preach his words to the world. He told us of his wrath and his judgment day. So then why the delusion? Personally, if I were in a delusion, I would want to wake up from it. I would not want to be in a spell, especially a spell that could separate me from God and from all the blessings in the heavenly kingdom. Sinning and feeling good in your flesh in exchange for burning in hell and separated from God Almighty for all eternity and not being a part of his royal family, I can't imagine anyone choosing sin over all of the perks and the benefits that Jesus Christ offers um, for repentance and believing that he died on the cross for our sins and that he rose from the dead on the third day 
and that he was born of the Virgin Mother Mary, and he offers believers, believers a life of fullness, love, kindness, compassion, truth, and transformation into the likeness of him by the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. It sounds like you've made a bad deal. Behind every man, uh, behind every human being is a man. Who is the man behind you? Is it God or is it Satan? It seems like the delusion is one of Satan's concocted schemes to capture God's people so that they might perish. And before they perish, they can worship him because he wants to be God. He wants people to believe in him instead of God. He is offering you temporary thrills in your flesh in order to entice you into believing a lie. A lie perpetrated against the one and only God in the universe, a God that he himself is waging war against. He is fighting for your soul and you are in a delusion. You are under a spell. God does not wish for any of his children to perish, but God is no pushover. This psalm is his majesty's courtroom, and in this courtroom there is no outside influence. The judge is not swayed by a jury or public opinion. There is no attorney present, just you. Every thought, every action, every sin you've ever committed in your entire life, open like a book for all of the world to see, with no hope, hope for mercy or reprieve. It's over. Your chance to repent and come before a mighty creator in brokenness and sorrow with a contrite heart is has no more an option. Your fate has been sealed. I don't know about you, but when I read this psalm, I'm so moved. If you love the Lord with all your heart and soul and strength, there is no way you would not feel the abuse and betrayal that God is feeling from the disrespect and disobedience of his children. This psalm is God's courtroom. God is fair and just God. He is the only just God. God knows every hair on your head, every grain of sand on the beach of the world, every thought that enters your mind, the complete state, of your, the complete state your body is in. Therefore, when he judges, he knows the entire picture, the motivation behind the action, the greed, the lust, the idolatry, the thoughts, the logic, the reasonings, all of it that lies behind your sin. You cannot hide. You cannot make excuses. The day has arrived, and who will stand before the judge? This is why the Lord tells us not to judge other people. It is because there is no way that we can know the entire picture of a person. We are not God, and not only God knows the entire picture of a person, he knows their heart, their mind, their body, and their soul. Now you know why we are not to judge other now you know why we are not to judge another person because if you do you are playing God. This is a severe violation to our Lord and one of the most difficult sins for people as sinners to overcome. So um, that's the message in the Psalm 50. Um, that was some of my interpretation, some of my input. And the Lord also gave me the word servitude. Um, the servitude, it just means that you have to yield to the higher power. You have to yield to him. You have to understand that he is the almighty God, that he could do whatever he wants. He can burn you up in a heartbeat, turn you into a cinder, a little burning cinder, okay? He was always here, he's here now, he will always be here, but you will be gone, but will you live beyond this life? That's the thing. Will you continue to live with him and his royal family in heaven? Or will you be in total torment forever in hell? Because there is a hell. And there will be hell to pay for breaking God's rules. And um, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, because if you don't 
turn to the Lord, you'll find that out for yourself uh, very soon. So um, I hope that um, this psalm has reached some people and uh, will make you consider to start paying attention to the Lord and um, ask the Lord for forgiveness, repent and start picking up your cross and following Jesus. Because um, I wouldn't want to think of the alternative. So um, I hope everyone has a blessed day. It's um, really nice out today in New Jersey. Beautiful blue skies, sunshine, nice comfortable weather. We're so blessed here today when there's so many people uh, suffering around the world. So I thank God for that. And I hope the Lord blesses you. And uh, I hope um, his face to shine upon you and that he might reveal himself to you. Okay? So uh, God bless everybody. Have a great day.